what is up y'all my name is nisha and i'm back with another video being about my father's business y'all see the title of this video i am back with another word from the lord this is another marriage word y'all i do have to say make sure you all test the spirit okay and take this word back to god not every word that i release is for everyone so make sure you take this word back to god in prayer also take me back to god in prayer okay and before we get into this word i'm just going to pray over this one right here publicly usually i pray before i start the video and turn the camera on but i'm going to um pray over this word y'all this is a i believe this this is a very powerful encouraging word so lord i thank you today for another day of life lord i thank you for your grace and your mercy lord lord i ask that you forgive me and us those of your children who's watching forgive us all for any sins that we have committed this far lord only and unknowingly in jesus mighty name lord i ask that you come in and take over this word lord come in and take over let this word go out in the order that you need it to go out in in jesus name lord i bind up and i rebuke any monitoring spirits that's monitoring your children and lord i bind up any witches or warlocks lord any um evil um word curses lord i can Cast it down to the pits of hell, Lord. I decree and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In Jesus' mighty name, no weapon formed against our promises from you, Lord, will prosper. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I ask that you have your way, Lord. Decrease my spirit, Lord, and increase your spirit within me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, y'all. And y'all have to forgive me because I am actually sick right now. Why well, not sick, y'all? We ain't claiming that. I bind that up. Um, I'm healing, okay? Your girl is healing and she's getting over a cold, okay? So my voice may sound funny. My voice is still kind of gone. But um, y'all, we're going to get all the way into this word. This this is a powerful word, okay? Um, regarding marriage, okay? So there's like a lot of parts to this word and I have notes written down. This word comes from a dream that God gave me, okay? Um, and y'all, I wanted to keep this dream to myself, but I just knew that this dream was for God's children, God's daughters, okay? And his sons, I guess. So, um, yeah, y'all, so I'm going to read this dream. So I'm going to read the dream first, um, and then I'm going to break down the revelation that God has given me. Uh, let's see. All right, so I had this dream on August 19th, and I'm going to just read off my dream, y'all. I write down my dreams so I don't forget them. So I'm going to just read off my dream. I had a dream that I was living with family, and my spouse came over to see me. We were in a room together, and I had my son playing with him. And my spouse in the dream joined me in playing with my son he bonded with him too and that made me happy in the dream it seemed as though my spouse was there with us for a long time because time was passing and he was still there bonding with us then we started talking about marriage and i said something to him along the lines of just do what you need to do because my spouse was talking about how he wanted to wait till everything was perfect and he wanted to plan and set things up nicely before he proposed. But in the dream, after I said that he should just do what he needs to do, he said, all right, and grabbed a ring out his backpack. And he stood up right where we were and asked me to marry him. And he didn't have on the best outfit. He was in laid back clothing and honestly, it looked a little tacky, but I said yes to him and he put the ring on my finger. The ring also didn't look expensive at all, but I said yes and I was happy with my ring and we both laughed after because we realized how tacky everything looked. But then I said in the dream, it's okay. After my spouse proposed, I left him in my room and went somewhere to grab some things. And when I came back, 
I thought my spouse was gone and I went looking for him and he had left my room and went to sleep in the living room on the couch. I woke him up to go back into the room and I thought to myself, wow, he is still here. And that was the end of my dream. Okay, y'all, that was the end of my dream. So now I'm going to get into my notes. I'm going to get into the revelation that God has given me regarding this dream. Okay, so like the title of my video says, God is actually saying a lot in this word, y'all, but that's all I could really fit in a title. So now I'm going to get into this revelation, okay? So God is saying that there will be unusual proposals and to let go of your expectations. Your spouse is coming to stay, okay? So for the first part of my dream, we're going to get into that revelation. Um, the first part of my dream, in my dream, I was living with family and my spouse came over to see me. So some of you are currently living with other people. That can be a friend, family, a roommate. And you may be wondering how you and your spouse will come together in that circumstance um, that you're in. Um, okay, so God doesn't want us to focus on the how, okay? Leave the how up to God, okay? He will do it. But in the dream, me being at family's house or living with family didn't stop my spouse from coming to see me. So God is saying that your circumstances will not delay the two of you joining together. Okay? And this, y'all, this revelation is just, this is some crazy revelation, y'all. This is not crazy as in crazy, but y'all know what I mean probably. Like, this is some powerful revelation, y'all, from the Lord. So, um, so the first part of my dream when I was living with family, um, I was living with family and my spouse still came over to see me while I was living with family. So, God is saying that your circumstances, whatever your circumstances are or whatever your spouse circumstances is, um, that's not going to stop God or delay your promises from him. Your circumstances will not delay the promise from God, okay? So it will not be it will not delay the two of you joining together. So now, the next part of my dream, y'all. So next, my spouse joined me with playing with my son and that made me happy. So for some of you, you may have kids from a previous relationship or marriage and that may be your concern if your kids will be accepted by your spouse. Your spouse will accept and love your kids as their own. So now moving on y'all, the next part of my dream. So after my spouse bonded with me and my son in the dream, then we started talking about marriage and I said something to him along the lines of just do what you need to do because my spouse was talking about how he wanted to wait till everything was perfect and he wanted to plan and set things up nicely before he proposed but in the dream after I said that he should just do what he needs to do he said all right and grabbed a ring out of his backpack. Okay, so he grabbed a ring out of his backpack and he stood up right where we was in the bedroom and asked me to marry him. So now let me give you the revelation uh, regarding this part of the dream, okay? So this part of the dream, God is saying that these men are already ready, okay? Like like I said, he grabbed, he already had the ring in his backpack. He was just waiting on the right time to pop the question. And this word goes with, this part of the word goes with a previous word that I released saying that your spouse is ready to redeem you. Like he's already ready. So God is saying that these men are already ready. They are just waiting on the right time to pop the question. They want everything to be nicely planned out as far as where, where they're going to pop the question, when, um, and how. Or they're, or they're waiting like for the, the look of it all, okay? Like they want it to look a certain way, okay? They're, they're waiting for the look of it to come together. Like they're waiting for, um, they're waiting to have like all the pieces together, like the look of it to come together, okay? Um, or for some of them, they are waiting for their circumstances to, um, their circumstances to be right 
okay? So for some, they want to get their finances in order first or their living situation in order, okay? So, but God, but God is interrupting their planning. He gave me the scripture, um, Proverbs 16, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. And that reads, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Y'all excuse me. I, I'm i hearing myself talk, y'all, and it's, I don't like how I sound right now. It's getting on my nerves, y'all. <laughs> but, um... So the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his step. So as I was sitting with God to get the revelation, y'all, um, you know, I prayed about it. And as God was giving me this revelation, he gave me Proverbs 16, 9 for this particular part of the dream. So in the dream, I told my spouse, just do what you need to do. So God gave me the revelation that with me saying that in the dream, this signifies him interrupting their plans their personal plans to have things set up a certain way before they pop the question to redeem you okay so god may use you the woman his daughter um you know without you knowing to say something um that will make a switch go off in your husband in your spouse to interrupt his plans okay to interrupt his perfect plans or god himself will put an urgency on your spouse's heart okay so me saying just do what you need to do in the dream um the revelation that god gave me was like this was him interrupting the plans of the spouse interrupting the plans of these men okay he's interrupting his son's plans to have everything set up perfectly and and, you know, he's interrupting their plans. That's why he gave me Proverbs uh, chapter 16, verse 9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Um, so God is saying that he's going to put an urgency on these men to just pop the question. Like, you don't need everything set up properly. Okay? So God can use you. Without you knowing that you're being used, God can use you to say something that's going to put a switch off in this man's heart to uh, put an urgency on them to pop the question, okay? Because, be, thank you, Lord. Because in my dream, I said, um, just do what you need to do. And right after I said that, immediately, he was like, all right immediately y'all he didn't hesitate he was like all right and he grabbed the ring out his backpack and um stood up and got down on one knee and proposed so um so god is gonna put that urgency in them and interrupt their plans so after i said just do what you need to do my spouse in the dream just said all right with no hesitation and he grabbed the ring out his backpack Okay, y'all, so there is some significance to him coming with a backpack, y'all. He had a backpack. So, the revelation that God gave me regarding this backpack, okay? Y'all, God got a sense of humor on this, okay? So, if you are, you may not know what this, what this meaning means, but um, if you are um, younger, and you know, you used to live in the world, be in the world, you know what people call a spin a night bag, okay? When people was you know, when people was talking about, um, they got, they spin a night bag. They finna pack, they spin a night bag. This is the revelation that God gave me regarding the backpack, okay? So that's the part of the word where God is saying your husband, your spouse is coming to stay. This time he's coming to stay. In a spin a night bag, let me just explain. In the world, y'all, they have this thing called spin a night bag, okay? They pack and they spin a night bag. And what spin a night bag is, is you pack a bag to go stay to go stay at the home of whoever you're dating or seeing, okay? So that's what a spinning night bag is in the world, y'all. But we know we we not supposed to be fornicating and we not supposed to be um we not supposed to be staying at nobody's house who we're not married to and we know that, okay? But God talks to me in a way that I can understand, in a way that, you know, I can relate to or, you know, or that others can relate. Okay, so for some of you, God had you on this unique spouse journey to where 
um, whoever he was saying was your spouse, it wasn't really looking like that should be your spouse because of the lack of communication um, or the separation. But it was set up this way because God was teaching you how to stand for your marriage, okay, in a difficult scenario. So when you do get in the marriage and run into issues, you know how to pray and persevere through because no marriage will be perfect all the time. Okay, so the next part of my dream, when my, when my spouse stood up and asked me to marry him, y'all. I noticed in a dream that he did not have on the best outfit, y'all. He looked it real tacky. He had on a laid back. If y'all could see, as I'm recording this video, do y'all see this U-Haul behind me? There's a U-Haul, y'all. This is a whole U-Haul. I've been seeing U-Hauls back to back. And y'all know I released a word about moving, relocating, y'all y'all is moving whoever that part is for y'all y'all is moving and uh for a lot of y'all this move has something to do with um marriage and purpose you know so so i noticed that his outfit was tacky okay he had on a laid back outfit and even the ring that he was um, about to give me, um, it didn't look expensive at all. Um, it kind of looked tacky too, y'all. It looked like he got it out the Cracker Jack box, okay? But I was happy with it, y'all. I was happy with it in the dream, okay? Um, and we both had laughed after. We both laughed after because we both realized how tacky everything looked, okay? And this is what this word is about y'all this is what god is saying that there will be unusual proposals okay unusual proposals so let me get into the revelation that he gave me regarding this part of my dream where i noticed that my spouse's outfit looked at tacky we both looked at tacky y'all i didn't have on the best outfit um the ring did not look like you know expensive at all it didn't look it didn't look like it didn't even have it didn't have no diamond so the revelation that god gave me was um god is saying for some of his daughters you are getting married quickly and in unusual circumstances or ways so it may not happen in the most romantic or beautiful way so god wants you to let go of your expectations okay um, and be careful. Be careful of how you react to whatever your ring looks like or be careful how you react to, you know, the setup or the environment that your spouse, that God is going to usher your spouse to propose to. Because like I said before, God is going to use you to say something or him himself or God himself will put an urgency in. Um, in this person's heart it's going to be like a switch just goes off y'all like y'all just going to be talking having a conversation and a switch will go off in his heart and god will put that urgency in his heart to just pop the question right then and there like you're not going to see it coming you're not going to expect it so god wants you to prepare your heart to receive this proposal in the environment it's going to be in no matter what that environment is um and to receive whatever your ring is going to look like or it, whether or not you have a ring or not like this is how unusual these proposals are going to be okay these are going to be very like unique unusual proposals okay so it might not be the best in the best setting so God does not want us to focus so much on the ring and all that because we know, you know, that can come later, okay? So God can um, bless your spouse to upgrade your ring or whatever later on, okay? So moving on to more revelation. So, so God is saying that you may not have everything in order or your spouse may not have everything in order. But God has placed an urgency on your marriage. He needs you to know that this marriage is not about the look, the ceremony, or the ring, okay? Or how the world portrays it to be about. This marriage is about the purpose that God has set out for the both of you 
for his glory and his kingdom. So he is saying, don't get caught up in how everything looks. These marriages is not going to look the way the world makes them look. It will be based off of godly love and his foundation over the look. Okay, so some of you may get married even while you are still living with other people. And then God will bless y'all afterwards. And this scripture came to me, y'all. So when God gave me this revelation, y'all, he gave me scripture. He gave me Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. And, that, and it says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Okay, so once your spouse finds you or join with you, he will obtain favor from the Lord. So when God gave me the scripture, y'all, he reminded me of two women that um, I came across who got married. They are right now, they're currently married. They got married in unusual circumstances, okay? They got married in unusual circumstances, okay? Both ladies got married while living with other people. Okay, so they both got married while living with other people. Um, you know, or they didn't have a place of their own. One of the ladies is here on YouTube, y'all. Um, I cannot, if she have her own ministry, you y'all may know who I'm talking about. Um, I cannot remember the the name of her channel though. I have her face pictured in my head but i cannot remember the name of her channel um and then uh, the other lady i came across who got married in an unusual circumstance um she's not she doesn't have like a ministry but she's like a vlogger y'all she's a vlogger she's saved um and she got married in an unusual circumstance i can't remember her name either i think her her channel name starts with an a if i'm not mistaken but yeah so both ladies both of these ladies y'all got married in unusual circumstances Okay, and this part of the word is not for everyone. Okay, so for some of you, God will be relocating you to a place of your own first before he brings this thing together, okay? Um, and your spouse will move in with you or you will move in with your spouse, okay? So take that back to God, okay? But, but for some of God's daughter, who this part of the word is for, um, like I said, you will be getting proposed to and married in an unusual um uh, circumstance your proposal is going to happen in an unusual circumstance so you might get proposed to while you're still living with family okay while you don't have everything together okay so moving on this is the last part of this dream y'all hopefully i don't hopefully y'all get this and i'm not sounding like i'm all over the place sometimes it is so hard for me to release god's word like especially when he give me a lot of notes to write down regarding this word when he give when he give me um especially when he gives me a long revelation okay to the dream okay so this is the last part y'all so after my spouse proposed to me i left him in my room and went to grab some things from a store and when i came back i thought my spouse was gone I went looking for him and he had left my room. I went looking for him. He had left my room and went to sleep in the living room on the couch. I woke him up to go to the room and I thought to myself in my dream, wow, he is still here. And that was the end. So this signifies even more, um, like I said before, that there will be no more separations, okay? So like I said, in my dream, I thought my spouse left. I went, I left him after he proposed to me. I left him and I went to the store, okay? And when I came back home, um, well, when I got back to my family house, I thought, you know, he probably left or he probably was gone, y'all. This man was still in the house, okay? He was still there. And I'm like, wow, he is still here. So God, so this signifies even more, right along with, you know, him bringing his backpack. This signifies even more that there will be no more separations or lack of communication, okay? All that is ending. So some of you 
um, have not been able to really spend time with your spouse or really get to know them because of all the separations and lack of communication. So you will literally, or not literally, be marrying a stranger. Like you know this person, but you know, you really don't know them like that. So really you're marrying a stranger. Like you're about to like, a stranger is about to, even though God has showed you, this is your spouse, but you you know, because of all the separations, you guys have not been able to spend a lot of time together or talk much, okay? So it's like, like this man is still finna come and propose to you when y'all barely know everything about each other, okay? Okay, so that is what it's going to seem like on the outside, especially, um, that, you know, you mar you're marrying a stranger. But God has still put that deep love there in the both of y'all's heart for each other. So although you barely know them, you still have a deep love for them. But this time around, you will be able to spend more time with them. Because like I said in the dream, he came with his spend the night bag, his backpack, y'all. And I left and came back and he was still there waiting for me to return. Okay, y'all, so that is the word, okay? So God is saying there will be, for some of his daughters, there will be some unusual proposals, okay? Like, you may get proposed to in your room, in your bedroom, like I did in my dream, okay? So you may get proposed to in your room. You may get proposed to in the car. You may get proposed to, um, I don't know, y'all, just like, in in a place where you least expect it it's so crazy y'all after getting this word a lady's proposal video popped up on my i think it's for you page and her husband proposed to her inside their house okay he did set it up nicely though but it was inside their house in a place you least expect it for others of you you may have the beautiful romantic setup okay you may have that but for others, it's just going to be on the spot. Like, okay, here. I want to talk about the kingdom spouse deception, okay? So, God do have some of his daughters on this unique journey to where it looks like this is not your spouse. Even though he has told you, you know, or gave you confirmations time and time again that, okay, this is your spouse. Um, so... There are some women that may been on this journey, but they have been deceived, but they have been deceived by themselves, okay? We have to go in prayer and take everyone back to God, and we have to make sure, we have to allow God to interpret our dreams or whatever, okay? We just can't take everything and run with it, okay? We can't take everything and run with it. This is how we can be deceived. This is how we can be deceived when we just take everything and run with it. Okay, we take every dream and run with it or we take a dream and flip it into what we think it is instead of what God um, is saying this dream is about. So there are some women who are on these unique spouse journeys that look like, okay, Lord, what's going on like i don't think this is from you many of you may have been doubting okay you have been doubting like oh, okay this might not be um some of you may be deceiving yourself okay so you have to pray and, and ask god to give you those confirmations but for the ones that know that you know that you know it was god um um you are on this unique spouse journey you know that don't look like everybody else's. So you have been in this place of doubting because you have been listening to, you have seen other people's testimonies um, who say, oh yeah, me and my spouse met uh, right when we met. We hit it off right away. Uh, we got married two, two days later. You know, we was engaged and married in like five months, six months. And you see in all these success stories, everybody is saying like it was just so easy. It went so smooth and you know, they didn't have any issues. They, they didn't go run into set being separated and run into lack of communication and run into all these issues, you know, which is fine. For some of his daughters, he do have you on this unique spouse journey because 
He's teaching you how to stand. He's building these marriages like strong and firm on the, the rock, on his solid foundation. He's teaching you how to pray, how to war in the spirit um, about your marriage, how to get, how to, how to stand firm when you run into issues in your marriage before you even get into the marriage, okay? Because for some of us, for some of us, we came out of bad, toxic situations and we told ourselves, you know what, if I run into this type of issue or this type of issue, oh yeah, all bets are off. Like, like it's it's over with, okay? Um, and the issue doesn't even have to be that big. Like, but so for some of you, God had to, because for some of you, you probably been questioning, like, Lord, why do I have to go through this? Like, why couldn't I have the perfect love story? Come on now, Lord. Wow. I was not expecting to go here, y'all. So for some of you, you probably like, Lord, why couldn't I have the perfect love story? Like, I'm seeing everybody else come, come into their marriage just so fast and smoothly, so easily. You know, like they meet in one day and married the next day. Like and everything going so smoothly. You questioning like, like, is this really my spouse? Is this really from you, Lord? Is he really from you? Um, because you just can't see like why God would allow you to go through this when everybody else's marriage is coming together so quick and so easily and smoothly. But God is saying that, um, these issues that what you what these issues that you think are issues that's happening in the beginning of you know um this journey for you this is a setup so that you can know how to stand firm this is a setup so that you can know how to persevere so that when you really get into the marriage and you run into issues because no marriage is perfect no relationships are perfect you will know how to stand. You will know how to persevere, okay? You will know how to go about things, okay? You will know how to not give up so easily. You will know how to fight. You will know how to not give up so easily. So God is allowed. It's just like, and this is what God compared this to, y'all. This is what he gave me. Someone that grew up in poverty, you grew up in lack, and then once you, let's say you um, win in the lottery, whatever the case was, um, and then they lose all the money, you know, some way, some way they lose everything. Since they, they're going to be, they're going to be able to still survive like they because they already came from that position like they already been in that position before they already fought that life before so once they get it all and lose it again they're going to be able to survive they're going to be able to be content in that okay they're going to be able to be uh be content in their lack they're going to be they're going to know how to survive in their lack okay they're going they're going to know how to make their situation work okay they, they're not going to panic too much okay and they're going to be able to build that success again okay they're going to be able to um build that success again versus someone who started off who was born into this success and started off successful and then lose it all you know they never had to survive before so now they're in this baby stage of learning how to survive in this lack. So that is what God compared these marriages to as far as like, this is why things have been so hard in the beginning. Like you like, Lord, I haven't even got a chance to, to really um, get to know this person or, you know, like it's been separation or issue after issue. Like, why is this so hard? Why is this so heartbreaking in the beginning? You probably like, if this, you're probably like, if this got to be so heartbreaking in the beginning, I might as well just give up. Like, I might as well just like, this might not be for me. But God is saying it's set up that way because he is teaching you how to persevere. He's teaching you how to stay. He's teaching you how to pray. He's teaching you how to war in the spirit, okay? Because he's like, um, these marriages are about to be built to last, okay? They are about to be built to last. 
and even when they run into issues they're we're they're going both parties are going to know how to fight through it you're going to know how to fight through it as a wife okay another thing that god had me write about in my notes was how the world will perceive this unusual marriage okay so people on the outside looking in may say okay maybe you're not ready for marriage okay so the enemy is going to use some people maybe in your family or your spouse's family or friends whatever the case is people around them they're going to um um use these people to be like okay i don't think you should marry this person or i don't think you're ready for marriage or the enemy could just put doubts in your mind or in your spouse's mind like i don't think you should marry because your finances is not in order y'all don't even have a place like how y'all trying to get married y'all don't even have a home yet y'all don't have this and that so but god is saying these unusual marriages are not going to look how the world um wants them to look they're not going to be structured the way that the world um thinks a marriage should be structured okay and we know the the adam and eve story okay god create and we know how you know god created the we know god does things in order but god is saying for some of these marriages he's doing a new thing okay he's doing a new thing okay we know how he does things in decency or in order okay but it's God's order. Whatever order, God can put things in the order that he sees fit, okay? It's not about the order that the world sees fit or that us, that we see fit. God will do things that he sees fit for each individual marriage, okay? So God is saying that some of these godly marriages will not be based on a love that comes with everything in order, okay? God still loves us and joins us in relationship to him without us having everything together he loves us and allows us to have a relationship with him when we are broken and broke okay i'm not saying that god is going to bring together your spouse while y'all are still broken and all of that okay god has healed us first but the point of this part of the word is that you don't need everything put together um for this promise to come together okay like god like i said god gave me the revelation that your circumstances will not delay the promise your circumstances will not delay the promise like i said in my dream i was living with family in my dream um, god had me purposely in my dream living with family while he had my spouse come over to give me this word okay because he's saying that you don't need everything put together before I bring this promise to you. You don't need everything in order or put together. Your finances, nothing has to be in order. Nothing has to be in order. God will eventually put uh God will eventually put things in order. That is why he gave me the scripture that, you know, the man finds favor from God. Once he finds a wife, then he finds favor okay so god was comparing these new marriages that he's putting together to you know our relationship with him like we don't he god does not expect us to have everything in order for us to be in a relationship with him okay for us to surrender our life to him we don't have to come with everything in order so this love these marriages that god is putting together that will happen in these unique circumstances these unusual circumstances will showcase a love that's been missing in this new generation okay because nowadays people are all about what you can do for them and they're all about the status or the aesthetics okay how it looks okay so in this new generation nowadays people are getting with people based on what you can do for them you gotta have your money in order okay a lot of these women out here saying they're not dating no bus driver they're not dating no uh no teacher or you know they want the millionaire man they want the six-figure earning man this is what the women today in this generation is doing nowadays they're saying i'm not going with no man that don't have no money or that don't have this and that don't have that okay but God doesn't want us to look at that. God wants us to, to, to go for who he has chosen for us 
and it says when a man finds a wife then he finds favor so we don't know what god has put on the inside of these men who may not be in the best position right now so people are going for people that match their aesthetic come on now y'all that is so sad and ridiculous y'all people are going with people who match their aesthetic like it's about the look okay they're they're getting with they're getting in relationships or getting with people for the look for the look okay and for the benefits for the look and for the benefits they're not getting in relationships saying how can i serve this person what can i do for this person how can i serve this person they're getting relationships um saying what can this person do for me and and does this person look aesthetically pleasing like is this person do, does this person match my aesthetic y'all or my status okay so god is saying these marriages he putting together it's not gonna be about that okay it's not about that okay it's gonna showcase genuine real godly love so that's why god is putting a lot of these marriages together when both parties don't have everything in order because he wants to oh thank you jesus because he wants to make sure that the world knows that love is not about the money. Love is not about the aesthetic. Love is not about status. Love is not about, love is not about all of that. Okay, that's not love. And we know that in scripture, it says love is not um, self-seeking. Love is not self-seeking, okay? All right. That is all that I have. That is it, y'all. That is it. This video is long, but y'all, I just thank God for this word. I pray that this word has blessed y'all, encouraged y'all to keep hoping, keep trusting in God for this promise to come to pass, okay? Keep trusting in God for this promise to come to pass. And yeah, y'all, that's it for this word. Make sure you subscribe and join the family if you have not already. And turn on your notifications bell so you can get notified every time there's a new word. And I'll see y'all in the next video.